Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can move a part by clicking on other parts. The way this is going to work is I created a controller here that will move the part in different directions. So if I click on this one here, it moves the part forward, backwards, left, and right. And then these two move the part up and down. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. So for this project, I'm not going to get too much into how to set it up, because likely you're going to set it up differently if you use it in your game. In general though, what you're going to do is just add parts based on the directions you want to move things. So if you just want to move this part up and down, then you would just need two parts. For whatever parts that you add, make sure that you add a click detector to them. And then the script for this is just going to go in the workspace. And let me go ahead and show you what you have to do for this. So there's a lot to the script, but like I said before, if you're just doing a couple directions, then just take the parts that you're going to use for your project. So what I'm doing up here is just referencing the click detector under each part. So what I did just to make it easy to remember what things are, is I labeled the parts depending on what direction I want to move things. For example, for the part that I want to press to move the part down, I labeled that one down. And then what I'm doing in the script here is I'm creating a variable called down, and then saying game.workspace dot, and then this will be the name of the part and then the click detector that's underneath it. Okay, this last one here is a little bit different. This one is a reference for the part that you want to move. So that last line will be a reference for this part right here. What I'm doing next is making functions for the different movements, and the setup will be basically the same for each one. First, you're going to reference the part, which is whatever part that you want to move. After that, you're going to reference its position property, and you're going to set that equal to the current position plus a new vector. And the vector part is what's going to change depending on what direction you want it to go. And this will also depend on what direction you're facing. So these numbers may not be exactly the same. In general though, the X moves left to right. The Y moves up and down. And the Z moves forward and backwards. But like I said, depending on which way your player is facing, you may have to switch things. You can also change this value right here. So if you want it to move by a smaller amount each time you press the button, then you would put a smaller number here. And if you want it to go a larger amount, then you would choose a bigger number. Once you figure out whether the X, Y, or Z corresponds to the movement that you want to go, to go the opposite direction, you're just going to do the negative version of that. Down here at the bottom, what we're doing is we're connecting a click event on a particular part to the corresponding function. So for example, I'm connecting the up part, which is this one right here. And I'm saying when this part is clicked, then what I want to do is run the function called move up, which is this one right here. And what that does, it changes the position by adding 10 to the Y. And the amount of these you would have to do just corresponds to the amount of parts you have. So if you only use two parts for an up and a down, then you would just use two of these. You would just use the first two. Just to help illustrate what's going on, let's go ahead and add one more button to our control panel that resets the part back to its original position. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this part. Let's go ahead and just copy one of these parts and we'll put it down here at the bottom. And we'll just change it to a different color so we know this one is the reset. Okay, just double check to make sure that this part has a click detector. I'm going to rename this one to reset. Now for my script, at the very top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say local reset is equal to game dot workspace dot. And the next part will be the name of the part that I just added, which is reset dot click detector. Okay, after that I'm going to make a function for it. So we'll say local function and we'll just call this one reset part. And what we're going to do for this one is we're going to say part dot position is going to be equal to and we need to know what the original position of this part is. So what we're going to do at the top here is we'll say local start is equal to part dot position. And then what we can do at the bottom here is say part dot position is equal to start. And down here at the bottom, what I'm going to say is reset dot mouse click colon connect. And then the name of the function I want to run is reset part. All right, let's go ahead and try it out and see if it works. Okay, so first I'm just going to click some buttons to move it to a random spot. And then I'll press the reset button. 
And it brings it back to the start here. Okay, so this is going to be the end of this video. If you have any questions on how to modify the script to add to your game, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I hope you enjoy this tutorial, and stay tuned for the next one.